Despite what the gurus might tell you, 99% of affiliates who try native ads will likely fail and lose all of their money. If you want to be one of the one percenters who actually make it out alive, then watch this video. I'm going to cover the most basic ways to improve your odds at native ads and how most people fail miserably because they don't know these simple facts. All right, my name is Joey. I'm from powerhouseaffiliate.com. Check out the links below if you want some more training related to online advertising. Don't forget to like this channel. Today we're gonna cover the topic of native ads. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on native ads over the years as an affiliate marketer. I'm gonna tell you why most people fail, why most people will lose a ton of money, and why the gurus are wrong when they try and tell you it's an easy traffic source for affiliates, okay? All of that's gonna be covered. We're gonna go in my computer. We're going to start with the most basic things and then I'm going to talk about some more advanced things that you need to consider if you want to have success with native ads. All right, let's do it. All right, we want to run affiliate offers on native ads. The first thing we need to talk about are the offers themselves. Typically what we're going to see is a lot of people saying ClickBank works. Then we're going to see a lot of people saying CPA affiliate offers work. Whichever one you choose, I prefer CPA affiliate offers. The amount of work and effort that goes into finding a good ClickBank offer is just too much. And really, in reality, there's only a few good CP, uh, ClickBank offers, I mean, that are working and everyone is beating them to death. What I'm typically looking for is an earnings per click above $2. So on the network, earnings per click. Typically not a very reliable number to rely on, but it is a good indicator that it is converting at the network level. You're also looking, or I'm also looking for CPA rates above $40 or more. Normally, I'm not really concerned about the CPA rate if I'm running cheap traffic, but native ads and good placements is going to cost you some money. So you need a high CPA rate in order to offset the amount that you're going to be spending on ads. So typically, you're not going to be able to run any offers that pay you know, a dollar fifty for a conversion, like the sweepstakes style offers. You're not going to run those on native ads. You're going to run those on push ads where you're getting penny clicks, but even then it's not as easy as it sounds. So native ads, a lot of people think they're easy, but they're not. So you're looking for straight sale offers and you're looking for maybe high pay high paying financial lead generation style offers. You can see the examples here of what types of offers are doing well. In, in the native category on Max Bounty, for example, this is Max Bounty CPA Affiliate Network. The link is down in the description if you want to join. They have a ton of offers and they filter them out for native so you can see the types of offers. So you have you know your typical crypto offers here, the antivirus straight sale offers, and you will see some e-commerce. E-commerce works well as well as the diet and health type of stuff here, like heal and soothe, pain relief, and you've also got crypt, uh, keto up here, which is a big one. So this, is, this one here would be one that I would be really looking at, Keto Advanced for Canada. So it's paying $120 per lead, so that means you know, typically the advertiser has really optimized this offer. If they're able to pay you $120 per lead, and you can see the EPC is actually really nice on this. So this would be a typical example. Let's say you want to run this type of offer on native ads. The next thing we need to do is some market research. A lot of people just fail to do market research. The tool I'm going to use here today is Adplexity. You can get a huge discount on Adplexity by using the link down in the description or just go to powerhouseaffiliate.com slash Adplexity and that is uh, the discount we've worked out with the owners of Adplexity. So this is the tool I use typically to start my research, but I'm not using this to rip campaigns, and I, people are probably laughing, yeah, right, Joey, like you're not stealing people's campaigns. The fact of the matter is, if you try and rip a campaign exactly the way it is here, it's not gonna work, trust me, I've tried, and many people have tried, and maybe you're watching this and you've tried, and it never worked, and you just don't understand why. I'm gonna tell you why in this video as you keep watching some of the things you need to consider before even trying to rip a campaign. So what we're gonna do is we're going to filter now down to just say keto, okay? We wanna do keto here. So what I'll start seeing is a bunch of ads. And what I have done is I've also set the filter here to 30 days. 
So I want to find ads that have been running for 30 days. So here we are, and now you can start seeing all of the ads. And to filter it even further, if I'm running only in Canada, then I'm going to come here and I'm going to select this. And there's 149 ads running that this tool has found recently that have been running for a long period of time. 30 days is typically my filter here. So you can see these ads have been running a while and they're pretty sketchy looking ads if you look, if you look at them, but they're just designed that way to get high clicks. And we're gonna talk about ads in a second. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna find the ads that are working and we're gonna look at, and go in a little deeper and we're gonna take notes. We're gonna write down what we're actually seeing here. We have Canada, this one's running in both Canada and US. And I can even look at the landing page if I want. I can look at how long it's been running consistently here. And this is fairly consistent con considering this tool and how it works. So it looks like it is actually, have, it has been running since August. And I can see that they're running it mainly on mobile. So these are all things I'm gonna consider when I set up my targeting. So now let's talk about what I do next. The next thing I need to do is, is obviously create a landing page for this offer. Now I can look at these landing pages and get, you know, ideas, but if you try and rip this landing page, it's probably been beaten to death a million times and a hundred other affiliates are probably already ripping it and doing the exact same thing as this guy. If you want to make money in native ads, you need to be original. You need to come up with your own ideas, your own images. And if you can even take your own photos and make them and put them onto your landing page, that's even better because then you can actually have copyright. And if you see people ripping your stuff, most of these ad platforms like revcontent.com, mgid.com, outbrain.com, tabula.com, they will actually ask the other person to remove their content if it violates your copyright. You have to have good relationships to do this, okay? If you're looking to build a landing page, check out the other training on this channel or look at the description below there's actually some really good training for landing page building and what tools i use there's all the links down below so i'm not going to cover building a landing page so let's assume now you have your landing page now we need to create the campaign and here's where most people make their mistakes let's use mgid as our example here because mgid is a great platform and they're very affiliate friendly there's a link down below in the description for some bonus money if you want to get some additional ads for free, just use my link down below in the description. I'll put it at the top of the description and that'll allow you to get some additional money when you join MGID. So go to powerhouseaffiliate.com slash MGID and you will actually be able to claim that bonus. So here we are, this is a native ads platform. The first thing you're gonna wanna do once you've created your account is you must, you must reach out to your account manager or at least reply to them when they try to reach out to you. They are going to be your lifeline when it comes to trying to make these things work. And this is where most people get lazy. They don't want to talk to anyone. They want to be a sketchy affiliate in their basement uh, without talking to anybody. That's going to fail miserably, okay? You need to create relationships with people and you need to talk to your account manager because they know all of the data. They know what's happening. They know how other people are, are running these offers. They know that they have the same spy tool as me. They're using Adplexy to see what other people are doing. They're also using their own tools to see what is happening. That is why you must create a relationship <clears throat> with your account manager. So that is the, the most important thing here. Now we're gonna talk about creating your campaign and your targeting. When you typically create a campaign on some of the major ad platforms like Google and Facebook, you have full range of targeting options, okay? However, on MGID and native ad platforms, it's a little different where you do need an account manager to really zero in on top placements. Where most people fail and lose all of their money is they watch some guru on YouTube about native ads and the guy's like, hey, just you know, try a bunch of different placements here and then weed out the placements that don't work and then you know, eventually you're gonna get a list that you're gonna whitelist and then you're gonna turn on a blacklist, all this crap, okay? It doesn't work. What you need to do is you need to talk to your manager and say, listen, I need you to put me in the premium placements right now. That's how you typically test. If you're testing on crap placements, it's gonna make it very difficult to find any data that's worth uh, working with. So really, I typically want to test on premium placements before I start opening up the, the less 
premium placements. So that means you're gonna be paying a lot per click. So now you need to consider your ads. Your ads need to be high click-through ads. That is why it's important to have really good ads that are high click-through. And that's why when you look at these ads, they have all these sketchy images because they're trying to get people to click on it because the algorithm on most of these ad platforms for native ads rewards people if they get lots of clicks. So you need to not only combine your clicks, your high click-through rate on your ads, you also need to make sure that the, the traffic is going to your landing page and is targeted enough and you're not doing clickbait. In other words, you need consistency and you need a good story on your landing page. So what you'll see here is a lot of these headlines will lead into a landing page that has the same story. Canadian doctors are stunned. Do this every evening to lose weight. If you click on that and then you go check out the landing page, it's probably gonna be the same story. Doctors are stunned, okay? If not, then they probably need to do a little work on it here, but I'm sure it is. Let's just have a look. Doctors stunned, and now it's going to be somewhat the same story. Yes, see we have a medical student discovers this secret mineral, whatever. It's a news story, and basically, you can either go with a fake news story or you can actually create a real story. And this is where people, again, fail miserably. They come here and they think they're gonna copy this page and they're gonna make this fake story and it just doesn't work, right? If you can make real stories and have real images, it actually works and I've tested this multiple times with my own campaigns with real stories of people that actually have this life-changing experience using a diet. Now, whether it's the same exact diet, maybe not, but um, typically speaking, real real life pictures and less less professional looking stuff works. So your imagery should be amateur. So we've talked about offers. We've talked about ad managers. We've talked about targeting. We've talked about ads. We've talked about landing pages. Now we need to talk a little bit more about the details that a lot of people leave out. So first of all, let's talk about tracking, okay? If you're not tracking your campaigns using another third-party tracking platform, then you are going to fail miserably. You need to use something like Volume or CPV Lab Pro. That's what I use. Um, and there are other ones, Thrive Tracker, uh, Funnel Flux. All of these places allow you to track traffic that's coming to your landing page. What you're going to find when you set up your ads on these native ad platforms is that your clicks shown in your third-party tracker are going to be much higher than what you're actually paying for. And there are reasons for this, and a lot of it comes down to bots. There are good bots and there are bad bots. Think about this tool, for example, Adplexity. How does it get all of its data? It uses a bot. It goes out and it visits all of these places and it finds um, these ads and it's actually bots clicking on these ads. Okay, so in order to get this data, it's using a bot to get that data to come in here. So this could be Adplexity clicking on your ads, or it could be um, another bot, like the Google bot coming, or there's good bots, and then there's obviously bad bots. I've done a full video on ad fraud, so check it out. I'll leave a link uh, up, I'll pop it up here. But basically, you need to be able to measure what's real traffic and what's bot traffic and what are you actually paying for versus what are you not paying for all that stuff okay to do that you need your third party tracking tool but another tool you can use to also filter out bot traffic before it even hits your landing page is cloudflare i use cloudflare a lot on all of my websites now you can actually use it free or they do have premium memberships available okay i'm not uh, an affiliate for cloudflare but i am using their service and basically you can like i said block all of your bots before they get to your landing page so now you can when you look at your third-party data of your campaign you can see widgets that may have much less clicks in your third-party tracker but you're paying for a whole bunch on the actual ad platform that could indicate that you, there's a lot of that traffic is actually bots. Um, so it's an easier way to kind of filter that way. I'm gonna do another video later about really detecting bots, but I would actually recommend Cloudflare as a, a bare minimum so that you can get and detect these malicious bots before they even hit your landing page. 
because um, it'll it'll filter it out before they're registered on your third-party tracker. Here's an example campaign and some other things to consider when you're running these offers. So what you're going to be tracking is actually the widget IDs or the placement IDs, depending on what ad network you're on. And you can start seeing certain placements and which ones are converting here. So you can see here 50 clicks that I paid for, eight of them clicked through my landing page, two of them converted. So this is the widget here. What I would do typically is start creating a list of all the widgets that are consistently converting. And that's where you start creating your whitelist campaigns. And you ask your ad manager if it's possible depending on whatever network you're on to create a whitelist for you and then you start feeding your whitelist campaign by setting up a separate campaign of blacklists so you're it's a blacklist campaign and and basically you'd have two campaigns running that are targeting different placements one is what they some people call a feeder campaign so you're feeding your whitelist campaign with whatever you find from your other campaign and then you're pausing it on your blacklist so that you can have it all in one high converting campaign. So the only way to do that is to be able to track your data. Another thing you're gonna be consistently looking for uh, if you do have your bot detection in place is you're also gonna be looking for high click-through rates or suspicious click-through rates. Um, for example, here, 49 people I paid for, not one of them clicked through my landing page. Somewhat suspicious. Um, still low data, but enough for me to tell that this is just isn't going to work. So I'm going to pause these types of placements. And I'm going to also ask my ad manager, hey, any other placement that's similar to this guy, please shut him down. Um, you're also looking for extremely high click-through rate. Um, there's not really enough data yet to de determine that here. Um, you want a lot of clicks with a lot of click-through rates, uh, like 50% or above, typically indicates something suspicious is happening on that bot or on that placement, it could be a bot. So assuming now you have all of your tracking in place, you have the targeting set up, how much do you spend? How much do you test with and how much do you bid and all that stuff? The bidding is really gonna be dependent on whatever your ad manager tells you. Um, really it depends on the type of offer, what country you've targeted, what browsers, what targeting uh, operating system you're targeting, all of that is going to be dependent, uh, is going to factor into what you have to bid. And the only way to know that is if you ask your ad manager because this constantly changes. Maybe last month the average bid on these top placements was 65 cents, but things have really gone through the roof now. It's Q4, you gotta bid 80 cents, okay, or a dollar. You won't know that. And, and, and for gurus to come on YouTube and try and tell you what the actual bid is, it's, it's just not going to work. You, unless they actually have the data and they can show you the cost per click. For example, on Rev Content, I've, I've run a campaign here. Let me just show you. Here is a campaign for an e-commerce offer that I ran in May of 2021. You can see 2,000 clicks. This is a United States target. I've targeted United States, desktop traffic, 62 cents on average per click. That is how you determine how much you're gonna be paying per click, is by actually running it or talking to somebody who knows what to bid. Now, how much did I spend? I spent roughly $1,000, $1,200 here to get data. Now, I haven't made any optimizations yet. I was getting paid roughly $40 per conversion, so I lost some money on this but it's how it works. Typically, you're looking to spend $500 to $1,000 on a test to get the data that you need in order to make changes. So once you have that data, then you can start going in and looking at the widgets and you can start looking at the landing page data and all of that stuff that I talked about before. So roughly $500 to $1,000 for a budget on a test campaign. You really need to have everything lined up, okay? Or else you're gonna lose your $500 to $1,000. So again, make sure you have the right ads, you have the right targeting, the right offer that is already proven to convert. You have your tracking all working. You've tested everything. Everything is working. You've talked to your ad manager. You've you made sure that they put you in the top premium placements. You're bidding the top bid so that you can get your ads shown. You've done your research using a tool like Adplexity and you are ready to rock. If you don't take all of those steps, you are going to fail and that is why most people fail because they, they watch a guru on YouTube and they think uh, I can just set up my ad 
to a ClickBank offer and away I go. High gravity means I'm going to make a ton of money. Wrong. You're going to waste a ton of money. Okay. So be ready to be prepared to spend money to get the data. Hopefully that's a good op eye opener on native ads. If you like this type of training, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Check out my other trainings. I'll be doing more videos. And if you want topics covered, please make sure you comment below and tell me what you want to see. Anyway, thanks for watching.